committed should spouses be to sex? And how important is sex in commitment? Thank you so much. Let me, oh, let me ask the question again. How committed should spouses be to sex? S-E-X. And how important is, is sex in commitment? Thank you. Let's start from uh, uh, Reverend Jerry. Well, uh, one thing that nobody can do for you, another woman can cook for you, another woman can do or type your papers, wash your clothes if you travel. But you are not allowed in scriptures to have any other relationship with another man or another woman that is sexual in nature. Whether it is sexual outer course or sexual intercourse, whichever one, yeah? I should explain the two. Outer course, intercourse. Outer course is what the young people will call tapping current. It is uh, doing all, all the emotional touch that does not end in sexual intercourse. And I found some people who will say that, oh, they can, they can hug, they can tap current, they can be aroused, and they still feel that they are under God not committing adultery because they have not committed the actual exercise of the penis and the vagina coming together. No, that's not true. What scriptures say to you is that I do not derive any other satisfaction from anybody, whether it is outer cause or inter cause, from any other person apart from Elizabeth. And she does not derive the same from any other person. So if you ask me how important, is as important as not reframing it from it so that you will not commit sin. That's what the Bible says in Corinthians. He said, 1 Corinthians 7, am I right? That's 3. He says you should not pull back from it so that you will not even fall back. So not even spiritual exercise is an excuse for not having sex. Hello? So how important is sex in marriage? Very, very, very important. And not the man or the woman should deprive the husband. I hear people say, oh, we have spent weeks and we have not touched each other. Okay, let one touch. Now, it is not appropriate. So I will say that if you talk about commitment, sex is the lubrication, is the oil that will keep commitment going. If you are very romantic and enjoy good sex life, then you can be sure that you have ensured your relationship. In the Bible, we have Songs of Solomon. It's a book on love making. It's a complete book on how to make love. So if the Bible deems it very important to give us a manual on how to have sex, then go ahead and have good sex. We have one in our own marriage. Well, I just want to say that no matter how spiritual we are, we must not neglect our sexual life. It's very important. There are some women, like my husband has said, that will say that they are on fasting, and they will be on this uh, long fasting. And their own fasting is that they will not have sex with their husband. When they finish the seven days fasting, they will still start another 14 days fasting. Why they will ask the husband to wait? After that one, maybe there will be a break of maybe two days or three days. Another 21 days will start. And from that, maybe they will say they are going to Oriokyo or something. Just giving excuses of not giving their body to the husband. Please, I want to beg us. 
ladies, women, that we should please try as much as possible to have good sex in the family. Once it is not outside your marriage, it is still godly. God will help us. Thank you so much, ma. The question also goes to uh, Daddy Reverend Mike. Thank you so much, sir. Sex, just like Daddy has said, uh, is very key to our commitments. Once sex is tampered with, every other, every other aspect of commitment will be tampered with. And that's why we must be very, very careful, both husband and wife, how we uh, handle our sexual life. Uh, it's very key. You see a lot of people, maybe a couple fighting, husband and wife fighting, and the people come in and say, what is the problem? Why are you fighting? What is the problem? You will hear the man say, see, she's not submissive. And the woman will say, no, help me ask him. In what way am I not submissive to him? The two of them are not ready to talk about it. But when you find out, you find out that it's actually the major thing. Sex is the major thing. They might be talking about some other things, but the bedrock of the problem is actually sex. And that's why we cannot play with it. And uh, just like mommy has said, we have a commitment. As a woman, you have a commitment to your husband to give him sex. Whether you are angry or you are not angry, we are not licensed to use our, uh, our sex denier you know, to punish our husband. I know that as women, we are tempted to do that most of the time. When you get annoyed with your husband, he has done something wrong and he's now on the bed in the night and he now comes and he's bringing his hand like a spider hand. And uh, you say, no, don't touch me. Don't take away your spider hand. And you turn to the other side. You know, because you want to actually use sex to punish him. Shabi, you said there's no road in the morning. Then now there's no road too. You know, but we are not licensed to do that. Because the Bible says we should not deny ourselves. And one thing I've also discovered is that many of the women that I go to different mountains today and say, God, bring my husband back. My husband has started going out. My husband has started doing this. They will not know they are, they are the one who, are indirect, who have indirectly or directly sent their husband out. And by the time they start going out, we begin to fast and pray that God bring them back. So we must be very, very careful. In as much as we are not to deny ourselves, I want to also beg our husbands Two, that we must come to time that as women, there are ways by which women enjoy sex than the men. You know, men, they don't need any, any, how do I put it now? Any preparation. Once they are, they are on, they are on, they want to go in and come out. But it's not like that for women. Women, just like when we are traveling too, we, it's so peculiar to women when we are traveling. It takes time. Well, there will be one day you will carry one bag and you are putting things. Then next tomorrow you are packing another thing. It might take a woman a week to pack load for a journey of two days. And that is the same thing that happens to us when it comes to our sexual life. We, it takes time before we are ready to actually go in. I mean, allow husband to come in. So, and that's why it's very important for our husband to take time to have foreplay with us. Foreplay. And you know there are different parts of the body which we call erotic zones where a man can carefully touch and play with that will arouse and stimulate, you know, the emotion of the woman. And by the time she is aroused, it's even her that will say, oh yeah, oh yeah, come in, come in. And you know by the time the woman is ready, the two of you will be able to enjoy it together. A woman that has sex today and enjoys it, he has sex tomorrow and enjoys it. When the man says in the next day that, oh yeah, you know the woman will be ready. But if he has, she has sex the first day, the second day, and engine has knocked, 
She's having bruises. When the man comes to talk, they say, oh yeah, what will you do? You pretend as if you are sick or you do one thing or the other to say no because she's not really enjoying it. There are a lot of women who are in marriage today counting numbers of years, but some of us have not even uh, and, uh, experienced what they call uh, orgasm. Ask women, what is orgasm? Some of them cannot say it because they have never reached that point. Meanwhile, the husband reaches orgasm severally. So such women will not have interest. So let's find out how best we can enjoy sex with our partner so that when it is time, the two are ready and they enjoy themselves together. God bless you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, man. Uh, maybe a few additions. Please, I want every one of us to note that um, if the scripture in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 says it is not good for man to be alone I will make him and help that is made for him there's something that reverend had said what that we must not forget every other person can help you in every other area of needs but there is an area of need that no other person can help and that is why God brought you you know that in our marriage covenant statement they will tell us the reasons why God ordained marriage and the second reason they will always put is that God ordained marriage to prevent sexual immorality so that those who do not have the rare gift of celibacy might marry and preserve themselves as only members of the body of Christ. Now, the decision of your spouse to marry you is actually an indirect way of saying I don't have the gift of celibacy. So help me face your wife now, face your husband. I don't have the gift of celibacy. Tell your spouse. That's why I marry you. And I think it's too late for me to pray for that gift. I don't have. And I cannot have it. Uh, so stop denying me. Say it now. Don't deny me. Oh. Uh -huh. I don't have the gift. It is those who have the gift that can stay away from sex. Hallelujah. Now, sex, the importance. Please, it is ordained not only for procreation. It is ordained also for pleasure. Even when procreation stops, pleasure continues. Help me tell your spouse, when procreation stops, pleasure continues like uh, baba and mama now you know they are no longer producing children and they are still doing something like we, we are doing something something ah my wife asked whether i am there the way mama spoke they are doing something uh -huh. hallelujah so please don't lose the pleasure that is in sex now, I want us to remember that sex has healing therapy. Do you know that sex can remove stress? Hello? Women, do you know that sex can heal your headache? Are you with me? Uh -huh. So, take note that sex is actually very important in marriage now when we come together as husband and wife and you hug each other intimately there is an hormone that is called oxytocin that will begin to run giri 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 all over your body and it will be pushing away pains and headache and all the rest of them uh -huh. you know so it will remove stress and also it is important that we maintain 
good sexual relationship in our marriages. But maybe we should just add, like my wife had said, that we men should take note that women, most women in marriage don't enjoy sex. They are only enduring it. They look forward to it before they enter into marriage. They are eager. But soon they get into marriage and they discover that the selfishness of those of us that are men rob women the enjoyment of sex. So help me beg your husband now. Don't be selfish. I know it day your body but learn to cool down. Uh, you know most African men are Russians. We just want to come and say, let us do it fast. Let us do it fast. The woman said, what is fast? Is it fast food? Are you in tantalizer? Uh -huh. You know, we must learn to cool down, learn to relax, and spend more time, like she was trying to say, in foreplay with our wives so that their body can be fully prepared and made ready for the sexual relationship. Now, if I don't do it, what is the challenge? Please, let's take note. And uh, like most of us men, I think men need to learn to do more exercise so that you learn to do some gymnastics when you are in the business. Particularly men that have big tummy. So that you don't carry out the tummy and be doing tummy exercise on top of your wife. And the woman feels so much pressure and she's not enjoying the sexual relationship. Learning the things that has taken me several years, I am still learning also. It's how to rest on my elbow such that I am doing business downstairs. I can also do business upstairs and play with those two oranges that God put for me there. Because women, I, I, I know I'm speaking your mind now. Yes. Because my wife doesn't know how to pretend. My wife will say, ah, ebato ke shere, ebato ke shere, mania, bo bagbara ti lo si sale. Okay. So, Praise the Lord. <laughs> all right, so we should learn to do all that so that our women will be able to enjoy sexual relationship with us. And like she said, when they enjoy, we'll be looking forward to it. And not only that, when they also have hurt, they will feel free to express themselves. They will not hide it. Praise the Lord.